Can 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 you uh, just talk me through some of these? Oh yeah, okay. The, the lithographs. Yeah. Okay. Well, they are. Keep in mind, prints. Okay. That means that I I've, mean. I've you're familiar with. Sure. You know that they're not mechanical prints. Right. They're handmade, and they're printed by hand, and they're printed by with people that right. are are really experts, uh -huh. lithographers. I've never done woodcuts. You can turn it around. Turn this one around? Yeah, yeah. You can move them anywhere. Well, you could put it somewhere else so you could see the one behind it. Yeah. I happen to like this one, though, a lot. Uh -huh. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's a composite of different images from different uh, uh, sketchbook drawings and stuff like that. But the others, which uh, are these... Uh, obviously models <coughs> ready to be cut out and assembled, uh, derived from a very tiny little uh, cards that I found, and there were about 10 of them, and they were about this big, you know, about five, you know, very small. And uh, I made model planes that have been in paintings, you know, I've, right. uh, three-dimensional models. And you can see on the upper left-hand corner the plane, what it would look like if you made it. And one of the things that I thought about, which I personally have done, is that I did a print and then actually cut it out and made a, a constructed a model. And I thought a daring collector uh, would do the same thing. It hasn't turned up yet. Maybe you would. But basically, it's a visual, it's very beautiful. Yeah. Uh, surface is everything that lithography uh, is and that's very strong you know it doesn't have a lot of different colors and the uh, rendering of the actual plane the three-dimensional plane is pretty strong and I love the idea of, of actually putting the instructions on, on it to tell you how you could do that how you could turn a two-dimensional object into a three-dimensional object uh, almost implying that all sculpture derives itself from a two-dimensional plane. It's very optical, you see, because basically when you start looking at all these wings, they look as if they're recessing into space, like the wing down below, then the one above it. So they look as if they're sort of staggered. But what's interesting about these, uh, particularly that image, is that it's a World War I uh, fighter plane. And these uh, planes, these airplanes, would be uh, sent to the flying field just painted grey. And the pilots would paint them. Really? That's yeah. great. So, so the pilot is being the artist. And in a way, it's the last vestige of the knights of old. <laughs> and in fact, one German ace painted the whole uh, myth of uh, Hansel and Gretel all the way around it. And it confused the British pilots so much by seeing this uh, fairy tale painted on, a, <laughs> on the side of a war plane. <laughs> but that doesn't have any, it shouldn't have any effect. It should work by somebody just having a pair of eyes right. and not knowing anything, not needing a PhD in art history. Right, exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so man. here I am back to the. Uh, common man. Well, I'll tell you something. I uh, went through a tremendous change when I found the right medication. Put it to you simple. And I take this medication and I'm very smooth and cool and don't get excited. There you have it. Yeah, you'd be amazed. <laughs> All it ne needed was that right, right pill instead of acting out. I relate to that. Yeah. yeah. The football. So, so right now you're in the whole athletic yeah. sports thing. Yeah. It's funny, you know, because as I told you, I uh, fractured my hip a few months ago. That's right. And so it's, uh, 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 somebody pointed it out, it's funny that you're doing all these athletes and you're hobbling around on a cane. <laughs> so hey, put that together. Right. I also wanted to uh, reach out to a broader public. Okay. 
you know, the I, common I, man. I want not the common man, but because um, they don't have the money to buy the paintings. That's the sad thing about being an artist, is that if you're a rock and roll singer or a reggae singer, you can write a song about all the injustice in the world. And then after the concert, you get into your Rolls Royce and drive home. Right? A writer can publish a book, he only writes one book, but five million copies of that book. Right. And it could be about social injustice and uh, this, that, and the other. And then he's got his uh, upper uh, east side duplex. And uh, right. whereas the artist has to rely on one person to buy a painting. And the painting, if it's any good, is of a certain price. And very often, those people that can afford to buy paintings have got their money by ripping other people off. So, in a way, we are the worst. You know, I think artists should be eliminated. <laughs> Just painters or? Uh, sculptures. Sculptures. Yeah. Well, writers. Right. Musicians. Yeah. A whole bunch. The leisure people. The leisure people. Yeah. But, sh but surely, but sh so, so... Because <laughs> now I am bullshitting. I know you are, you know I know you are, and that's why I'm not even laughing. In and out. But, 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 the, but the athletes, though, you, so you, you painted these in particular to appeal to a wider eye. Yes. That's all. Yeah. That you didn't necessarily have to have a very esoteric uh, mindset to have an experience. Right. And I've said that about all of them. Who, who are your favorite artists, contemporary? Um, Jasper Johns, Bryce Vaughan. See if there's anybody else. Pickens are very thin. <laughs> Do you ever collaborate with artists? No. Artists don't talk to each other very much. Maybe if he was in Manhattan, he would, but probably not. Because there used to be a very close camaraderie in New York when I first came to uh, the United States. And uh, that was before the money situation entered into it. You know, because nobody had any money. And uh, so, uh, you know, Pollock and de Kooning right. and kind of all this. And as soon as Pollock sold a painting to Peggy Guggenheim for $300, then things changed and became competitive. Right. <laughs> and now it's very competitive. Do you like shows? Do you like having your own shows? Yeah, I do. It's always as if you have another chance. Well, sometimes the shows have been very badly received, critically. And so that really gets my goat. But it, but so I come back here and I say to myself, you didn't like the last show? Wait till you see this show. <laughs> and is it, all, is it the same writers? Uh, yeah, more or less. Roberta Smith. Does that hierarchy of Schnabel and, 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 and Black Mirror and, and some of these people, do, are you, do you see yourself in this group? No. I've been... Uh, you're referred to as so, though. Characterized right? as being a progenitor of the neo-expressionists. Julian used to work for me. Actually, he was very sweet then. He was a very, very nice guy. And underneath it, he is. But he's got this uh, grandiose idea about himself. Right. You know, he can tell you quite wide-eyed, you know, he's the greatest painter in the world. Well... You know, you can't say that.